Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bells here. I'm um, going to hit you with some notes for data analysis. This is for section 5-1 and we're going to deal with things called uh, nth root radicals. Our, um, our whole unit is kind of dealing with rational uh, things and a rational uh, term is a ratio or fraction. So now we're going to look at those ratios, those fractions in the exponent spot. So go. again, pause the video anytime you need to uh, take your time, slow it down, whatever it is. So I got a lot of stuff going on here already, but I think you guys are going to be good with it. Again, like I said, anytime you need to, just stop the video and just to make sure that you're good with it. Okay, so we're going to start off with this. Um, this is a fraction or a rational exponent. So anytime you have something over something else. Now I threw a negative on it, but it doesn't necessarily need to have a negative on it. It could just be a regular one. What I want you to know is this. Anytime that you have some base going to a power that's a fraction, this portion of it, the bottom, is going to be considered the root if we throw it in a radical sign. Okay? Where the top portion, I'm going to circle that instead, the top portion is going to be considered the exponent. Okay? So whatever the denominator is, that becomes the root. So for example, this 25 raised to the 1 half power is the same thing as the, I put that right, that goes in the little thing, as the square root of 25. And I know that sometimes you guys might not have seen this before, but if you don't have any number in here, it's considered a square root. If I put a 2 in there, square root. If I put a 3, it's considered a cube root, which means I'd need three numbers multiplied together to be able to get that. Okay? So uh, 4, 4 numbers multiplied together to get that, whatever it is for it. So it's like what undoes a power. Okay. Now on this, if I have a base to a negative exponent, I want to make sure you remember your exponent laws. So a base to a negative exponent is the same thing as 1 over that same base to a positive exponent. So again, negative exponents just go downstairs. Example, if I do 6 to the negative 2 power, that's the same thing as 1 over 6 to the positive 2 power, which is, of course, 1 36. Okay? So now we're going to take a look at um, what has solutions, what doesn't have solutions. So let's say I have the cube root of 8. So the cube root of 8 means I'm looking for three things multiplied together that equal 8. Well, I know that's 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. Awesome. So how about this? Cube root of negative 8. Okay, normally when we have negatives under radical, we just say that doesn't exist, right? But is it possible if we're looking for a cube root? Well, that means something times something times something that equals negative 8. And indeed, there is negative 2. Because a negative times a negative times a negative can get you that negative. So the gist is this. With odd roots, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on, uh, you can get solutions there. Okay, so let's take a look at this next one. Fourth root of 16. Well, that means something times itself four times. That'll give you 16. We know that 2 works there. How about here? Fourth root of negative 16, something times something times something times something, uh, that equals a negative. Well, if it was a positive, the same one repeated, that would equal a positive. And if it was a negative, four of them, that would equal a positive. So there's no way, with both of those possibilities being positive, that we can get a negative underneath the radical. That's why that one does not exist. So odd roots... You can have both positive and negatives. Even roots, you can have the positive one, but you can't have the negative one. Now with that being said, if I had an actual equation like x to the fourth equals 16, um, and then I took the fourth root of both sides, and I'm solving the actual equation, and I'm solving the actual equation, then I have to look at both positive and negative solutions to this in plus or minus 2 would be a solution to that equation. However, we only use positive 2 uh, when we just have the expression like that. Okay? So one of the things that you've got to be really good at doing, either put it down on a 
chart or a card or something like that is knowing all of your powers going up quite a way. So let's put a few of them on here. Uh, so 1 uh, times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, and so on down the line. Um, but what about the next set? So I'll just kind of scratch that off and just do the 2's in here. So 1 times 2 is 2, 3, 4, 5, so you don't have that all in that thing. And 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times... 4 is 8, and 2 times 5 is 10, and you got all of those, right? But what happens when I treat it, uh, multiplying it uh, by itself, or squaring that number, okay? So that's that column right there is uh, one that we're, we're just going to kind of ignore right now. And let's say that I squared it, and then I cubed it going to change the focus here a little bit. So I square 1, I get 1. I square 2, I get 4. I square 3, I get 9. I square 4, I get 16. Square 5, I get 25. Square 6, I get 36. Square 7, I get 40. 9, square 8, I get 64. Square 9, I get 81. And square 10, and I get 100. So you should know all of your squares. In fact, you probably know 11 is 121, and 12 is 144. We should probably go up to an even dozen there. But what about cubes? So 1 cubed is still 1. 2 cubed is 8. That's an important one. 3 cubed is 20. 7. 4 cubed means 4 times 4 times 4. That's 64. 5 cubed is 125. 6 cubed is 216. And these are some of the ones that you should just know off the top of your head. Now, if you don't know them, you can always take your handy dandy little calculator like this and do like this, 7 raised to the, that's this button right here, 7 raised to the third. Like the next one, 7 cubed is 343, so I can go ahead and write down 343. Now as we go up higher and higher and higher, we might not know all of those, and that's okay. 64 raised to the third power, excuse me, uh, 8 raised to the third power is what I meant to say. Uh, this one's 512. Uh, 81, or 9, raised to the third power, 729. And then, of course, 10 to raise to the third power. These ones are easy, right? You just keep adding a 0 as you're multiplying by that number and over and over again. So let's do this one. One more. 1 to the 4th, yep. 2 to the 4th is 16. 3 to the 4th is 81. 4 uh, to the 4th is 256. 5 to the 4th is 625. And... I'm going to say that's probably good in terms of those things, uh, in terms of what you need to know. So if you know all of these ones pretty well, we're probably good in terms of the problem. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to look at rational exponents and say, hey, uh, how do these things work out for us? What does it actually mean? Um, and can I evaluate these ones? Uh, is it possible without the use of technology? Okay. So 27 raised to the 2 thirds power. Well, first off, if you have an older calculator, older calculator, you got to make sure that you put that fraction in parentheses. Okay? If you have a newer calculator, like one of these things, it'll automatically do it when we do 27 raised to the 2 thirds. It'll put that exponent up there. Uh, older calculator, you got to put it in parentheses. Newer calculator should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this, and you can see that the answer is 9. But I want you to know why it's 9. Okay, so let's see if we can do this without the calculator. So basically what that means is this 27 to the 2 thirds power is, if I rewrite it, is the same thing as the cubed root of 27 squared. Or, I could do it like this, the cubed root of 27 squared. So it doesn't necessarily matter which one that I do first in terms of this thing. But what I'm going to tell you is this. Uh, if, do you guys know what 27 to the second power is? Off the top of your head. Go, go, go. No, I don't. I don't either. It's big. It's big. It's big. I don't want to do that. But if I do this one, I can cube root 27 first and then take whatever that answer is and square it. So cube root 27. Oh, look, there's 27 right there in my table. 
Uh, so cube root of 27 is 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So this part, the cube root of 27, becomes 3, so now I have 3 squared. And that's why that problem equals 9. Good deal. Same thing our calculator told us. So I'm going to do this one again. I'm going to try this one. And then I'm going to show you. All right, on here. 16 raised to the... Uh, that was negative 3 fourths, negative 3 fourths, enter. I got 0.125. I'm like, ooh, that's a decimal. I don't like decimals. So right here on your calculator, you can hit the math button. And then hit the f um, first one right here, it's fraction. And that's not even on the older calculators. And that'll change your decimal into a fraction. And you can see that I should get 1 eighth when I do that. Okay? So my goal is to get 1 eighth. How does the calculator give me 1 eighth? So I'm going to rewrite it again. So I'm going to do the fourth root. Remember, the denominator goes in the root. Fourth root is 16, and we said we should do that first, and then raise that to the negative 3 power. Awesome. So what is the fourth root of 16? Well, there's a 16 right there. And if I want to know the fourth root of 16, I go all the way over here, and that's a 2. Um, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. So now I have 2 to the negative 3 power, right? Because that expression equals 2. 2 to the negative 3 power is the same thing as 1 over 2 to the positive 3 power. Remember, negative exponents go down below. That's one of your exponent laws. You covered that in algebra class. 2 to the third is 8, because 2 times 2 times 2. And there you go. There's your 1, 8. That's the same thing the calculator got you. Let's go to this one. 32 to the negative 2 sevenths, so I'm going to go 32 raised to the negative 2 sevenths, and I get that, ooh, that doesn't, that, that doesn't look very pretty, does it? Awesome. So I'm going to do math frac and see if that changes it, uh, and it says nope, there's no nice fraction for that crazy decimal. Good deal. So it's something like this, uh, let me show you what it is. So I'm looking for the seventh through to 32 raised to the negative 2 power, right? So that would mean something times something times something times something seven times to get me 32. Well, if I do 1, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1. If I do 2, well, let's try this. 2 times 1 is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Ooh, I hit what I wanted, but that's five multiplications and I need seven multiplications which tells me automatically that this number is not pretty. It's a long decimal, which means I can't do it by hand, and this is where I need to be able to use my calculator. Okay? So, let's watch it one more time, see what that number is. 32 raised to the negative 2 sevenths. Negative 2 sevenths. Uh, oops, sorry. 32 raised to the negative 2 divided by 7, like that, negative 2 sevenths. I hit enter. And I get that number, 0.37149857232. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you this on the calculator because it's really good. I'm going to go ahead and store that answer. That's this button right here, STO. I'm going to store that answer in X, like that, just like that. I'm going to hit enter. So that's that. So then I'm going to do X times X times X times x times x. That's five of them, right? I need seven of them times x times x. There's seven of them. And now you can see I get, uh, I get that. I get that. Good deal. Now, um, you're like, wait, what? How's that? Well, I have to raise that to the negative two power. And I get that. And it looks like I just screwed up one of those things. That should have been my answer. Oh. Okay, just ignore the calculator portion of that for just a second. There's a little bleep on it. Uh, trust the fact that this one, the only way you can get that answer, that 0.39, uh, is by using your calculator. And I'll show you the other thing uh, in class, and we'll go over it then. Uh, again, nothing that you needed to have on it. Okay. So, we've shown how to convert from a rational uh, exponent, like this, into a radical. Now we're going to talk about solving some of these equations, okay?
So x plus 3 to the 4th equals 625. How do I go ahead and solve that? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to go like this and show you what x plus 3 to the 4th looks like. So I go to my y equals, and I put it in parentheses x plus 3 parentheses uh, raised to the 4th, just like that. And I want it to equal 625. So I do that, and I go ahead and hit zoom 6, which is my standard view window graph. And you can see it looks like this. But 625 is like way up there, way up there. So uh, on my window, I'm going to have my Y max go to 7. I'm going to have it go to 800, actually. Uh, now I hit my graph, and now you can see there's my X plus 3 to the 4th. And you can see there are two different solutions right there. There's this one right here and this one right here. So our goal is to find those ones. So let's try it real quick in the calculator. Second trace, number 5, intersection, enter, enter, enter. So one of my solutions is supposed to be 2. Right? And second trace, number five intersection. Remember, move your cursor over here closer to the other one. Remember, one of my solutions was two. Enter, enter, enter. And my other one's supposed to be negative eight. So I'm supposed to get two and negative eight when I go ahead and solve this equation. Sweet. So how do I do it algebraically, not graphically? So right here, this is my first step. I need to take a fourth root. So I take a fourth root. I take a fourth root. I get x plus 3 equals, remember when I take even roots in equations, I have to look at both positive and negative values, right? Now the fourth root is 625, oh, look, 625, 625, fourth root, that is a 5. Awesome. So then x equals, because i got to get rid of this plus 3, so I go to minus 3 and minus 3, so I have negative 3 plus 5, and I have negative 3 minus 5. Those are my two solutions. Negative 3 plus 5 equals 2. Hey, that was on my calculator. And negative 3 minus 5 equals negative 8. That was also on my calculator. Sweet. Um, so again, it's just solving an equation using an exponent like that. So we're going to have a root that's not just a square root anymore. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one here. Well, I can't I can't cube root this side. Whenever I'm going to do a root, I need that to be isolated completely by itself. So I need to get rid of the 2, and I need to get rid of the 8 first before I do anything. And you guys know, I hope you know, PEMDAS, when I'm solving an equation, when I'm solving, solving, when I'm solving an equation, I want to do PEMDAS this way. I want to do PEMDAS backwards. So I need to get rid of addition, subtraction stuff first, so that's the plus 8. So I'm going to do minus 8, minus 8, and I get 2 times 3x minus 4 cubed equals 18. And then I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get 3x minus 4 cubed equals 9, just like that. Now I'm a cube root, I'm a cube root, remember put the little 3 in there, that's important. Uh, cube root of 9. Do I have a cube root of 9? Nope, don't have a cube root of 9. Uh, so that doesn't do me any good. Because um, remember, these are my, my roots over here. So cube root of 9, that's some, some sort of weird decimal. So I'm going to get 3x minus 4 equals, and pull out my handy dandy little calculator, 9, uh, oh, cube roots. How do I do cube roots? Well, we just said, right? We raise it to the 1 third power. Because the root is the same thing as the denominator of a fraction. And I get 2.08 and 008. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, um, if you're doing stuff on your calculator, just keep that number on your calculator. But on your paper, you can, uh, I'd, point, I'd probably write it down, 2.080084. Uh, I'm going to at least go to there on my paper. Okay. And now I need to add 4 to both sides, right? So my calculator, I'm just going to do plus 4 and hit enter. I'm going to hit enter after every computation that I do. And then I have to divide by 3, uh, divide by 3, enter. And I get 2.0267. So x equals 2.0267. Okay, so that's my solution. Now watch. This is kind of cool. This is something I want you to do on your calculator here. I'm going to store that in X. We're going to actually do this correctly this time. Store that in X and hit Enter. So that's supposed to be my answer, right? 
Now watch. I'm going to type in the left side of this equation right now in my calculator. So I got 2 parentheses 3x minus 4 close parentheses raised to the third uh, side arrow plus 8. I'm going to hit enter and it should say 26. Ah, look at that, 26. So that means I did the equation right. I could also do this. I can go to my graph and get this this way. So clear that out, clear that one out. This is just good practice for you on the graphing calculator aspect. 2 parentheses 3x minus 4 close parentheses raised to the third uh, plus 8 uh, and I want that to equal 26 just like that, yeah? I want that to equal 26 and then I'm going to go ahead and um, zoom 6, that's my standard viewing window you can see there's a cubic function going up the 26 is up a little bit higher so I'm going to go on my window, y max, I'm going to put that up to 40. Now you can see there's my cubic function, there's 26 coming across. Second trace, number 5 intersection, enter, enter, enter. And you can see right there, look. And we'll focus it. We like, whoa, look at that. 2.02669, the exact same thing I got when I did my algebra. Okay? So hopefully this was beneficial to you. This is all the notes that you need to be able to do for lesson 5-1. Uh, remember, uh, if you're in class, hopefully you'll see all this stuff too. If you're at home, um, make sure you've watched this and, uh, and handle the homework. Um, data analysis. This is our rationals uh, unit, and we're going to deal with rational exponents, rational expressions, rational equations, all kinds of things dealing with this is Mr. Bell's. Let's talk to you later.